Hi everyone, I am your host, owner and creator of The Mix. Welcome to my channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you guys for tuning in to The Mix. Thank you for your support. Thank you to all my viewers, subscribers, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I need for you to like, like, like this video and listen to the entire video, everyone. Listen, listen, listen. Listen to the entire video. As you can see on my screen what this video is going to be about, yes. This is a technology related video. I'm not sure if any one of you guys, um, if any of you guys heard of what it has taken place. <laughs> and uh, we do know technology is just driving the um, entire country now, entire world. So I found this article um, interesting. But before I jump into my review and commentary and opinion, I want to go ahead and play this clip. And I need you guys again to like this video and share this video. Also drop a comment. I need you all to drop a comment. What are your thoughts? But here's the clip, and this is from NBC News. Here you go. Mistaken identity. A man in Vancouver was able to unlock and drive someone else's Tesla Model 3 by only using the Tesla app on his phone. He says he thought he was getting into his own car because it was the same color. He didn't realize his mistake until noticing things in the car didn't look quite right. And then he got a text message from the actual owner who was able to unlock and get into his Tesla. They eventually switched cars. The man says he tried to contact Tesla with video evidence. But hasn't heard back. Wow. 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 <laughs> I know you guys heard that. Uh, wow. Technology is taking over. Taking over. But there are some pros and cons. There are definitely some pros and cons to it. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Um, on electronic driven vehicles um have you experienced one um also do you believe technology is just going too far a little bit too far i have a story to share with you guys kind of like story time um myself i've experienced a hybrid vehicle recently i had some service on work done on um one of my vehicles so i was put in a loaner vehicle and it was a um lexus suv I had no idea it was hybrid um, because when they picked up my vehicle, they dropped off the loaner vehicle. So I'm just like, okay, um, well, I'm going to go out, do my errands, run my errands and everything. And um, I'm like, okay. So I get in the SUV. It's really nice, um, similar to my vehicle. So I was wondering, you push the brake and then you press the button because it's push start. And I'm familiar with that. And it didn't automatically start like what I'm accustomed to. So I'm like, what is going on? So I'm kind of like, I'm like, okay, I don't want to damage this vehicle. So I'm like, okay, just relax, be patient. So I did it again. And it just took some seconds to click on, to, to, to connect for the engine to start going. So I'm like, mm, I don't like this. So I got to my destination. I arrived to my destination. And I, um, so once I got out the vehicle, the SUV, the Lexus SUV, so I'm just like, and it was a NX vehicle. Um, I looked, and I'm like, oh, this is a hybrid and I wasn't even paying attention to the dashboard. So when I got back in the vehicle, it's an EV. And I was like, oh, and no wonder why when I was at the light, it seemed like the engine turned off. But I will say this much, you guys. I, I really didn't like my experience with it. It seemed like it, ro dro it was driving a little bit too rough. I mean, there's some pros and cons to anything, to everything. And I thought, too, perhaps maybe my next vehicle would be a probably an EV. But I don't know. I don't know, unless I must just probably need to test drive other EVs, um, other models. So I'm wondering um, how smooth Tesla's drive, <laughs> you know, because it is an EV. But um, yeah, that particular Lexus SUV um, NX, I just, it, it drives pretty rough. Um, and it's the start after, it, it, it was like a delay, a delay. So I don't know. I don't know. It was kind of weird, something I'm not accustomed to in terms of delay wise. And I'm accustomed to like a smooth ride, a smooth drive. So I was happy to eventually get my vehicle back. But um, that was my experience with an EV slash hybrid, hybrid vehicle. Um, but yeah, so I really didn't too much like it. Um, although I do like Lexus, the model, it's just the brand. I like it. But nevertheless, that, that hybrid SUV, no. And I've driven another Lexus SUV but it wasn't hybrid and those drive smoother, smoother, right? Smoother than the um, hybrid, in my opinion, based on my experience. So, but yeah, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? I'm going to go ahead and go to an article, read an excerpt of uh, the article from the Forbes magazine <laughs> talking about this um, matter where the 
guy ended up unlocking someone else. Um, Tesla. It says man unknowingly unknowingly unlocks someone else's Tesla with app and drives away. <laughs> this article is from Forbes magazine, as you can see on my screen. And um, this is posted on the 13th. Just going to go through some excerpts. I'm not going to go through the whole article, but feel free to go to Google and, you know, read the entire article. Okay, it cites, the article cites Vancouver's Rajaj, that's the guy's name, can hardly be condemned for thinking he was getting into his own Tesla last week in a parking lot. The vehicle he unlocked got into and drove away in was the same color and make as his own, his very own after all. The app had done its job seemingly. (laughs) He had done his job on somebody else's vehicle. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Um, Yeah, this is funny. This is hilarious. But there had actually been two Teslas parked next to each other. Ooh, that happens. I mean, I went to someone else's vehicle. Let me just insert another story. Um, I've gone to someone else's vehicle thinking it's my vehicle um, before as well in the past, uh, quite a few times over the years. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is not my vehicle. (laughs) Um, The man was in a, he was such in such a hurry. He could, um, so he had to pick up his kid from school. He noticed as he drove, however, that there was a crack in the windshield he hadn't seen before. (laughs) Red flag. (laughs) He called his wife to ask about the crack and she knew nothing about it. When you do have a vehicle, a luxury vehicle or whatever, you kind of notice certain things. <laughs> um, I can test, attest to that. And then he noticed his charger in a different spot. He noticed his charger in a different spot. So that was pretty much like another red flag. The article further states that um, he, noticed, uh, he noticed his charger in a different spot. And again, that's another red flag. He got a text 10 minutes minutes later, you guys, and read, Raja, are you driving Tesla? Another text explained that he had taken the wrong Tesla. Wow. So the actual owner, um, not the actual owner, but Raja pulled over, got out, and saw the wheels on his particular Tesla were different from his own. So that was another red flag. Another one. He then called the texter. Each party was reasonable and uh, together amicably they worked it out. Um, and that's pretty much it. And also I I read somewhere else that they both contacted Tesla um, and there was no response. There has been no response. So this is going to be interesting. I want to one. I wonder what Tesla is going to do, how this is going to play out. Um, because this is a, a huge red flag, a huge uh, um, technology electronic era. So, but yeah, you can. I, I've seen someone operate a Tesla from their phone, and um, it was just so amazing how they had their vehicle driving to them uh, from their phone. Um, you can do that also. Well, not with other vehicles, uh, model vehicles that I'm aware of, but you can start your vehicle from your phone. Um, provided that you have the app and all of that with some newer luxury model vehicles. So I am aware of that. But um, yeah, technology, has it gone too far, you guys? What are your thoughts on this matter? This was just pretty um, hilarious to me, yet concerning as well, because I can I can just only imagine how both owners were like, wow. So they ended up meeting up one, one another. They didn't like take it to heart or whatever. So, and of course they swapped cars <laughs> back or whatever. But yeah, they notified Tesla and crickets as of now. Crickets from Tesla, you know, I don't know how they are going to, I guess, remediate the situation or uh, what they're going to do in terms of, um, because someone was wronged, but both parties were wronged in the situation because that should not have happened. Um, unless they have some type of, uh, disclaimer with the actual Tesla vehicle when it comes to operating the vehicle via your phone and whatever automation they have. Um, and maybe it was a user type of situation. So I don't know. I don't know because I don't own a Tesla <laughs> and I never tried, test drove a Tesla. So um, this is going to be interesting to see how Tesla responds and how this plays out. But yeah, I just found this um, technology related story kind of interesting. 
and wanted to get you guys thoughts, wanted to share it and want to um, just give my reviews and commentary on it. Again, like, share, subscribe this video, like, share, subscribe. I hope you guys listen to the entire video. And, uh, but yeah, so what are your thoughts on this? Um, have you experienced um, an issue with your technology related vehicle? If you have one that was pretty updated, it doesn't even have to be a Tesla. It could be a GM. It could be you know, a four, you know, because a lot of these vehicles have been updated technology wise and um, newer models. So it's pretty much technology, technology driven in a lot of vehicles. But um, do you own an EV or a hybrid vehicle? Like I stated, I had a, a not so good experience with the um, Lexus hybrid SUV. Um, I just didn't like how it drove. It wasn't a smooth drive. So, you know, I, I have no interest in getting one one day unless they update it and this was a 2020 one too i test drove well it was a longer vehicle it was a 2020 um lexus suv so a newer model but um again the the, the drive is pretty the drive is pretty um rough for that particular vehicle but yeah have you all experienced driving a hybrid or ev vehicle electric vehicle what are, what are your thoughts what was your experience like um I mean, I don't think we could, uh, it's inevitable. Technology is improving, excuse me, not only improving, but just updating everywhere, every day. Everything is technology driven from banks, you know, financial institutions, um, legal. Um, now you have um, online databases for court cases and things of that nature. They no longer house things in the law library. It's, it's the electronic, you know, they still have the law library, but all cases are being it's not put it is not being put in books and i learned that when i was taking legal classes cases are being uh, funneled now to um a legal electronic database so uh, but yeah so i mean everything it's inevitable you guys we are going we are living that we are definitely living that and you have homes you have smart homes now um can anyone of you testify or have experience a smart home you know, you have these homes that now a lot of their um, um, utilities are ran by uh, technology, technology. You have the thermostats that are iPads now and things of that nature. So you have um, solar panels on the roof. I, I mean, we can't pretty much escape a lot of this because everything is being um, is being mandated too in a lot of different states. You have uh, electronic stoves now and um, I did if you go into my video section you'll read on what I um, you'll li you can listen to the published video on electronic stoves and um, stoves being uh, gas stoves being mandated in New York and in California so once gas stoves are mandated you're not gonna have a choice but to uh, be stuck with giving uh, or purchasing an electric stove. So, and they gave their reason, but you got to go into my video in the video section to um, familiarize yourself with what I, um, my commentary on that subject matter. But yeah, it's inevitable. Technology is inevitable in so many sectors, so many areas. Um, like I said, you have online banking, even the big banks have transitioned over. You have paperless environments, all of that. So you even have now, you can conduct your tax um your taxes online, you know, with a lot of different, a lot of people do their own taxes this time, the, around this time of the year, you know, with these databases, and it pretty much does it for you, you know, so you just plug it in your information. A lot of things is, um, like I said, it's technology driven, we have no choice, we have no choice. I know um, you have now in construction, you have um, these, I know my son was sharing with me, you have these blueprints now, blueprints are becoming digital instead of paper, you, you know, so... <laughs> We, we're, we we don't have a choice, you guys. We don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. That's the way of the world. Everything is transitioning to totally like electronics and database. You have the grocery stores, the grocery stores, self-checkouts where you're scanning your own items, you know, and that's, uh, and a lot of this is eliminating um, jobs. I told you guys I did a, if you check out some of my videos in my video section, I did a video on um uh, Job replacements and technology, and for some strange reason, that video can, does. When I try to upload it, there's no sound, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, redo it. I am. Um, I'm. I'm not sure why it's not compatible with YouTube. Once it's uploaded, there's no sound. It's weird because I can actually listen to the sound in my phone. So I'm gonna see. I don't know. Maybe I can. 
put that over, um, not put it over, but uh, transition it over to one of my editing apps uh, for videos and see how it goes with that. Perhaps I'll be I'll be able to upload it then to YouTube. So I'll see. I'll see how that goes. But yeah, I did a whole video on technology and job replacements. You know, so you have now too. You have a lot of online um, assessments. Assessments with the educational sector. You know, um, education. You have students now taking cl classes online. It's, it's now is more now than um, it was before in the past. So this is just something that we have to. Um, it's inevitable and. It's like, if you don't catch up, you'll get left behind, you know? So, um, although a lot of people, um, you have a sector of people who basically they're, um, they're old school, they're traditional, you know, they prefer the old school traditional way. And, um, and these are, it's more so older generation, um, above 50 and, um, or above 60 and they're set in their ways and rightfully so. But um, at the same time, you have the millenniums, um, and I think they call them Gen Z's and Gen X's and all of that or whatever. You have, um, well, Gen Z's and millenniums, you have, they are born into this. They have been born into this, you know, so it's what they do. You have Ubers, you know, they just, everything is on an app. You know, you have self-driving -dri self, um, vehicles now. But do you think technology is going too far? I would be, I, please drop a comment, drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this. Man unknowingly unlocks someone else's Tesla with app um, and drives away. It, it can happen. It can definitely happen. It can definitely happen. I know I was sitting in my car vehicle once, I'm going to say a couple of years ago, just sitting in a parking lot after I left the grocery store and somebody came up to my vehicle like it was their car and I looked and I jumped. It was an um, older um, person. And they, it was a lady and she's just like, oh, I'm so sorry. I thought this is my vehicle. I mean, it happens. It happens. It happens with older vehicles, you know, not just apps. So just imagine when it's electronics, when that's in the mix and the apps too, it can definitely happen. It can definitely happen, you know, so, but there should be some safeguards in place to prevent something like this from happening with an app, with electronics. So I would be uh, interested to know if Tesla has something in place. Or was this simply just a user type of situation where the user didn't do something to ensure that they were getting into their vehicle? Not saying it was their fault, but when you use electronics and uh, any type of electronics, there should be some type of safeguard in place. And I know there's a lot of um, disclaimers and this and that, or it could have been just a simple glitch, you know, so... Um, did he select the right model? Did it pop up? You know how sometimes when you are out and you find different hotspots, it's so many different hotspots pop up. So which one did you select, you know, that you can get in, you know, so should Lex, not Lexus, should um, Tesla be, um, should it be open? Whereas, um, and I don't know, so I'm just speculating at this point. Is it whereas it's kind of like you track, not tracking, but when you're trying to collect, connect to someone else's Wi-Fi, and different ones pop up. Was it that case? And if so, should that even be a part of Tesla? And I know there's trial and error with anything electronic dri driven and um, pun intended. <laughs> there is trial and error with that. Um, however, when you're dealing with a vehicle and people lives, you, that's 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 a huge safety thing, a safety concern. You know, so um, it's it's definitely huge, a huge safety concern. So. It does Tesla have it, whereas you select your model when you're logging into the app and it, it or in different apps pop different, not apps, but different uh, models pop up and you select the wrong one and then it opens it. Ugh. I'm thinking maybe that's probably the case. I don't know because I don't own a Tesla. I'm just, again, speculating. What if that's the case? Like, is it um, if, is it the same as a Wi-Fi connecting and, and the guy just selected the wrong one? And if it's set up that way, um, should there be some type of controls in place, you know, because it, you could accidentally select something and it lets you right in, especially if there is no lock on it in terms of Wi-Fi. So yeah, drop a comment, you guys, drop a comment in the comment section. Um, again, like, share, subscribe to my channel, like, share, subscribe, share this video, everyone, share this video, and I need you to comment, share this video, share the mixes video, <laughs> share it, share it, share it. Again, this is my technology um, driven video. Again, the article came from Forbes and the audio came from NBC News um, um, on YouTube via YouTube. So 
just like to cite my sources, <laughs> like to cite my sources and give credit where it's due. But I just thought this story was interesting and um, it speaks to the times that we are living in. <laughs> we are definitely living in. So again, drop a comment, like this video, like this video, share this video. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for supporting my channel, The Mix. I will talk to you all soon. Bye.